Welcome to Dare to Dream podcast. This is Debbie Dashinger, and the show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. I, I am making a decision because uh, platforms offer a lot. And although this goes out exactly as the show goes out every single week, which means youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, Spreaker, et cetera, Apple uh, and Google Podcasts, and many, many, many more, all your favorite podcast sites is where you can hear this show as well. I am on radio, BBS radio, radio public, iHeart radio, Pandora, and more. So the show is incredibly available, but I thought, wouldn't it be really fun to just do a behind the scenes and show y'all what it's like to actually be doing a podcast show. So after 12 years, here I am making even new choices, right? Change is freaking good, people. <laughs> it's really good. And a little later on, I'm going to bring on my guest, who is Lisa Cherney. Lisa Cherney, since I've been doing this 12 and a half years, I have to guesstimate, was on my show 11 years ago when I was at a radio station in Burbank, an adorable little me. I remember her coming on the show, and it's like, Lisa Sasevich, who? Lisa Cherney, who? And like, they were rocking it out there. So I had lots to learn, right? I was I was quite new, leaving from an acting, singing career, stepping into radio and books and interviews myself. So here we are, low all these years later. So I'm really excited to get caught up with her. And I can tell you, she's living La Vida Loca because she checks in with herself, figures out what rocks her world, and goes out and does it, no apologies. And that speaks to me. So I wanna talk a little bit about the power of finding safety, finding security, because it can be a like really huge influencer for a lot of people trying to figure out and mitigate life and find out where those pockets where I can be safe and secure. And it's interesting because safety and security sometimes can stop you doing the very things that you most want to do, like wherever we are, right? And we want to have that foundation that allows us to be stable and resilient, even in the face of challenges from life or losses from life. I'm going through one right now, I can tell you in real time, my mom has Alzheimer's. And it's like, you never think you're going to be in that position. I'm in that position. I'm the one on the West Coast. I'm the go-to person. And I got to tell you, I love her. I want the best quality of life. And it's freaking exhausting. So understand for all of us, you have your own mm, that you're dealing with on whatever level it is that our inner security, our strength, that's what's on the inside only. That's what gives us that feeling of real safety and peace, that the power comes from the silent self within. What does that mean? That means we're living in the moment. What does that mean? That means we settle into pure consciousness and awareness. What does that mean? That means maybe of a daily practice or meditation. So find those things, because those are actually the anchors that we hold on to and draw upon in every day. So I offer you a thought for today, and that is my sense of security cannot be shaken. It's within, it's already within me. It's here already, it already is. Amit Ray wrote, if you wanna conquer the anxiety of life, live in the moment, live in the breath. And so it is. So indeed, you can subscribe to the show, and I uh, definitely think you should because it's so much easier when it comes right in your inbox every week, and I do have master-level interviews. I'm on over 40 syndicated outlets, Apple, Google Podcasts, Spreaker, YouTube, BBS, Pandora, iHeart, Stitcher, and more and more and more. Leave a review, five-star review. We love you for it and then people can find this level of conversation. I wanna thank Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness for supporting this show and being our sponsors. And they're doing amazing energy work out in the world, anywhere you are, you can get their products or become a facilitator or just attend the classes. And I'm telling you, they move stuff like that. Dr. Dane, D-A-I-N here, H-E-E-R.com, as well as Access Consciousness, Dot com. So the question that I have for you is this. Do you know how to be unapologetically you? Do you want to learn that being whoever the F you want to be will help grow your mission-based business? 
My guest today is Lisa Cherney. She's been mentoring millionaire entrepreneurs for over 20 years. She's the host of the groundbreaking confession-based GFR, which means Get Effing Real podcast, and creator of the 12 GFR Commandments. In 2014, after 15 years in business and speaking on over 750 stages, Lisa herself got effing real, and she dismantled her successful seven-figure business as the juicy marketing expert. Lisa learned that just because something is successful and people like it doesn't mean you got to keep doing it. She always knew she had a low tolerance for not being happy because after all, she left a successful corporate career with companies like AT&T and Lipton at age 28. But now she knows her mission to help soulful entrepreneurs get effing real so they can get out of their own way, help more people and make more money. If you want to learn more about her, go to our website, with it, which is gfr.life, gfr.life. And I'm bringing the gorgeous and amazing Miss Lisa onto the show. Lisa, it is so great. Hello. To <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. That was a great introduction. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I think it's pretty amazing, don't you? Like you and I have been around the entrepreneurial block, right? But you yes. were already doing amazing things when I first met you like 11 years ago. I remember you took that long drive from where you live to Burbank just to come be on person at the station. And here we are. It was a thrill too. I was like feeling it. I was like, ooh, I'm going to like a real radio station. I'm meeting this famous gal, Debbie. And I, I think I still have uh, some pictures on my old website. Cause I was like, I, I thought I was the shit. I mean, are we allowed to say, oops, sorry. I thought I was really cool. <laughs> And you can, I already warned people when I did the pre okay. promo about an hour ago, she's from Hockey <laughs> and she curses a lot. <laughs> I do. It's like, I blame it on New Jersey partially <laughs> from Jersey. Well, I live in California. Too. You know, yeah, we both have the back East in common as well, but it's really cool to get caught up with you. And I, I love this idea. I find it very refreshing that for you, it's like, I'm cutting through the BS. I'm going to figure out what my soul is calling for, what song it is that it wants to sing and sing out loud. So I wanna know right here, why is celebrating you? Why is for you being so effing real, so important, so paramount? It is super paramount because I know that I'm a mission driven entrepreneur. I have a certain way that I want to help people in the world. And I know that when the more real I am and the more I'm willing to put myself out there, the more I attract the people that I want to help. Right. And I believe that's universal for all mission based entrepreneurs, that if they can speak their truth and be unapologetic with themselves and their marketing and their selling and like in their Facebook lives, in their interviews, that people that need them are going to just they're going to gravitate them like they're just it's going to be like a dog whistle that only their ideal clients can hear. And the more that we dampen things and kind of make it vanilla and like make it more general and we're worried about offending anyone and we're not speaking our truth, we actually don't get the keys to the kingdom. We don't get to connect with the people that we want to help. So I'm really curious when I hear you say that, what kind of confessions do you get out of people? Can you share a few examples of some of the things that you've heard that we're really going on for people inside. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So well, in my show, the GFR show, the whole premise is telling people's stories where their struggle served their mission, right? I mean, I had a gal confessing about how she married a narcissist and he lied to the police and she was in jail for almost three years because of it. Wow. I mean, I've had people mm -hmm. share with me that... Um, that what looked like an accident that paralyzed them was really them trying to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. That was like, I mean, so profound a confession. We've had people confess about having enormous amounts of debt that they created in their business through investments they had made, through mentors, like through, you know, overspending, you know, those types of things, you know, and that's, and you know what I'm finding, Deb, is that there's like, 
there's like a string or like a pattern of confessions for the mission driven entrepreneur. A lot of people that have come through debt, a lot of people that have um, married the wrong person, been in relationships with the wrong person, or at least I don't, I don't really judge experiences like that, the wrong person, but that, that somebody that just, you know, tore them down or abused them or, you know, left them or, you know, and that fortified them, like the experience they mm -hmm. had with that relationship, you know, help them, you know, go grow to the next level and their assertiveness or their self care. So a lot of things around that, you know, really. Um, and then of course, you know, what you would, what you would think, you know, people that have experienced abuse, um, of it, things like that, people that have had their kids have experiences that they never shared about. One of our recent guests, her kid tried to OD and she didn't share about it for years and years, but it was a pro had a profound impact on her mission. So it's, um, it's funny because people say when they listen to the show and they hear these stories and they hear confessions, like they're like, at first they look at it, they're like, well, I've never been in jail. I, I don't know that I'm going to relate to this person. And then they listen to the person's story and they're like, oh, well, yeah, I was in the wrong relationship. I did get duped by this guy. And oh yeah, I, I let this person like, you know, usurp my authority. And I let, you know, I gave away my, my individuality. So there's commonalities to all the confession stories. I know I'm going to be on your show soon. And when I first filled out the paperwork, I was pretty clear about my dark night of the soul and, you know, wrote up a few lines just, you know, so you can launch from there. And then things changed like in three weeks. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to talk about that. I think there's something way more prevalent because I could feel stuff percolating, you know, definitely in process right now. So I love the fact that you've got this forum where we get to be real because it's so easy to be doing what you're doing out in the world. I got to tell you and see if you relate how many rooms I walk into and people without even checking in will go, you know, I see you all the time. I know you're really successful. I see all that. And then, you know, clearly they're following me, which by the way, thank you. I love you for that. It's so meaningful. And there's a real human. So there's, there's other levels, you know, that are going on and, you're not just a, a, a thing, an object, a, a social media, you know, icon. You're way more than that. You've got way more life than that. Do you experience that too, where people come in, they feel like they know you? I do. And one of the things that I take great pride in is being transparent and sharing my struggle. I believe all struggle serves. In fact, it's right. It's really um, central and core to my mission with, with GFR. It's like, it's not about just helping people get real because that wasn't urgent enough that that didn't impress upon the mission driven entrepreneur like we need you now. So that's why I added the F, <laughs> you know, it like creates urgency. And I, you know, yes, I have people come up to me, you know, that, oh, my God, I love your energy. I get that. A lot. I love your energy. And, you know, and I, you, you're so real and I learned so much from you. But it's like the most vulnerable times, like when I told my hundred clients that I was closing down my seven figure business five years ago that like I was so scared to tell them. And, but when I was real and I just said like, it's, I just, I'm, I'm not, I just, I'm not loving it anymore. It feels heavy. Like mm -hmm. I love all you guys and I, I see you're getting results, but it's just, you know, I just shared so authentically and you know what? It was like, I was shocked with the outpouring of love and how much people like wanted to be near me even more. And like, they were so relieved because they were, didn't want to admit that something that they were building doesn't feeling good. And, you know, so it's really that, that authenticity and that realness. Um, it's, it's, it's funny. It's like, I didn't realize it, but it's like a superpower, like that, mm -hmm. that I, I really will share all the things, you know, about my life. And uh, I really feel like it's in service of helping people get out of their own way and get, get doing their mission. So cool. It's actually in my human design. It's my, it is my superpower. And the moment I'm not vulnerable, people, it, 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 I'm never going to do as well. So it's, it, it's really a calling, no pressure. Um, and you know, it's interesting when I hear you say all of this, how you confess to a hundred people, I'm shutting this down. I know it's been great, but I'm not feeling it. It's too heavy. I had something else, which I think when you're creative and an entrepreneur, that's the way there's always these new pieces that arise and call you. And, you know, there's that little element of, again, like I just got here. Can't we ride this one through to retire? Aren't I done yet? <laughs> <laughs> I get it all the time. And I'll tell you totally. that um, 
I had a particularly rough time about five months ago. Um, the, the dealio with my mom, it's for real, you know, like really. Uh, and thank God I've got an amazing uncle back east and an amazing brother back east. Thank God, you know, because they pick up a lot of slack and I'm the one here. And there are times I feel like yeah, you're there. I'm here on the West Coast. I'm going gray. I'm aging. This is too much. And I'm trying so hard to do so much in my own life. So it's hard. And I was having one of those days and my best friend was having this party that was really important to her with ritual for reason. And a few of us were gathering at her beautiful beach home to support her. And I came in with all this heaviness, you know, and I'm telling you, the universe is so good because we were just hanging out a uh, bunch of gals, you know, really beautiful spiritual entrepreneurs. Uh, some of us didn't really know each other, but we knew her. We're eating and talking. And I kid you not, the woman who's leading the ritual starts talking about caring for her mother. And I'm like, and then the whole conversation around the table becomes that. People in different increments of doing exactly what I'm going through. Some of them having mom live with them because she's aged. And I felt so blessed in that moment, supported by the universe, that I had a forum where I could just let it rip and say, this is what's going on for me and this is how it feels. And the beauty, I think, of being vulnerable, confessing like that to one another, leaning on one another, telling stories with one another, is that you know, you're not alone and, and, and it uplifts, like my whole energy shifted. I was so different after that conversation all the heaviness went away. I was all right. I was able to fully be there. I love that. So the power of confession. Um, and I just want to say, Lisa, it looks like your screen has frozen. I don't know if you see a froze screen or if people out there. I do. Seeing... Okay. So let's, let's just unfreeze it because everybody knows we're in Mercury retrograde and I am playing no more Mercury. I know you're over on the 20th, but I'm done with you for sure. It's, it's been interesting. Um, I want to ask you, Lisa, something very vulnerable, if I may, which is what's the scariest confession that you ever made outside of what you said to the hundred of your former clients or maybe clients who came forward with you, but what's the scariest confession you made publicly and how did it turn out? You're... Yeah, what is the serious, most serious confession that I've made and how did it turn out? Well, I have to say that the one that felt the scariest was talking about my unconventional marriage. And I, about six years ago, my husband who, husband and I have been married for 25 years and about maybe it's like seven years ago now, um, we opened up our marriage. And that can mean a lot of things and I can go into all kinds of details or you could just listen to episode 11 of my GFR show and I go into it in, in lots of detail. Um, but like the, the thing, I felt like a coming out and it's funny mm -hmm. because um, I have a membership called the GFR squad. It's super affordable, you know, 20 bucks a month GFR squad and people gravitate to it because we do confess and we do talk about all these real things. And I, I remember that um, we, we did a call like a month ago, a confession call and everybody was felt like they were coming out, Deb, about something. Like we had one gal that felt like she was coming out because she didn't believe in prescription medication. And mm -hmm. she was kind of worried about medical doctors hearing what she had to say and being shunned, right? We had another gal that was coming out about being spiritual in a corporate environment. And so, you know, I for sure felt like I was coming out as non-monogamous, you know, the, the general term, just lots of terminology, but I'll just say that's another one, ethical non-monogamy. I, I felt like I was really coming out and I felt like it felt more risky than even being, you know, gay or lesbian or even bisexual now, because mm -hmm. those seem to be people kind of have a reference for that. Um, and so I, yeah, a couple of years ago, I did a, my first interview where I talked about this called being married and dating. It was kind of fun. And, but I have to tell you that before <laughs> that I had to come out in my own life. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like you, there's a, there's a confession first in your own mind. Like you have to admit and confess to yourself. And the more and more that I talk about confessions in the show and I have the squad now, we do these confession calls. We talk, we realize there's, there's subtleties. Like 
Like you could say it to yourself, like you're driving along and you're like, oh shit, this relationship is really not going to, this isn't really where I want to be 10 years from now. I can't imagine staying mm -hmm. with this person. And you have that thought and it comes in your mind and out as quickly as the rationales and resistance and logic can, could, could dislodge it. Right. And so it took me a long time to come out to myself and then come out to family, you know, confess to family and really to the point where I realized, you know what, I, my mission is about being unapologetically me. It is about being authentic and congruent. And so I, I felt like I was hiding a part of myself and that didn't feel good. So that was my most courageous confession. It felt I was, you know, I wasn't really worried about backlash, but that was there, you know, like, you know, people having judgments and people having certain, you know, religious um, connections or affiliations that have certain, you know, constructs around marriage. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that it brings up for people. Um, but so far, it's been okay. No lynchings yet. <laughs> uh -huh. I, how, of all the people, though, I, my most curious is your family. And I'm a kid, certainly, um, parents, uncles, aunts, cousins, like how, how were they? Well, the first person that we came out to was our daughter, who was 10 years old at the time. And we have one child, our daughter. And she said, you could do whatever you want as long as you stay married. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when you think about just what a precious age that is and how we really raised her in an open-minded household. So she didn't have a lot of like, really firm, like this is what marriage is and, you know, that kind of thing. And so that was a beautiful, like first coming out and she was really accepting. And then from there we went to our parents and um, they were really accepting too. Like they, I think that they were really honored that we told them. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think they wanted to screw it up by like being all judgy <laughs> and stuff. And I think that, they, you know, I feel like they knew like, you know, we're like, you know, almost 50 years old. It's like, I, I think that they knew that at this point, it wasn't like they were going to say anything that make us change it. So they may as well like embrace it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mom is like a poster child for non-monogamy. She loves, you know, having extended family. <laughs> she thinks it's really great. Um, and, she's, you know, they're super supportive and respectful. And, and most, most people have, you know, no one's been outwardly negative, but some people are just, and you, you all experience this when, if you confess something, it's like, People will, they may just be standoffish or that you just might notice an energy where they're not, you know, comfortably as comfortable being around you, or they say they don't have questions, but then you could feel that, you know, they don't quite get, you know, get it all. And, and so, um, you know, ultimately we just had to decide that it was way more important for us to be authentic than it was to have everybody's approval. Yeah, man, you're so brave. I really like, if I had a hat on, it would be off right now. I have so much <laughs> love around this. I really do because I feel like we live in such a judgmental society when it comes to sex and choices. And yet behind closed doors, I think there's a lot going on and nobody talks about it. Um, and it's very easy yes. to talk one another. So true. But, uh, you know, I know about a lot about the world you're talking about. And I actually think there's a lot of beauty in that world. There's a lot of health in that world. Should it be somebody's choice? So um, I think the most important thing, though, that I'm saying is not so much about the world, but the fact that rather than take on the mantle of shame, you have chosen unabashedly. This is who I am. These are my choices. You've spoken about this from stage. And I got to tell you, uh, this is about as brave as I think it gets. Yeah. Courage. Doing something Thank inside you. of the year. Thank so, you. I, I I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, I kind of feel like it doesn't have a face. It, you know, non-monogamy doesn't have a face. And I, uh, you know, and I've had people that are in the sex positive non-monogamy world who say, thank, thank you for coming out because you're, you look normal. And so people will think it's normal. And because it gives people permission to say whatever it is, X, Y, Z in their space, sexual or not. But I think that's really important. Exactly the permission to be. So what about this and other things and confessions and just being effing real? What about <clears throat> turning people off actually turns us on? Yes. So one of the things that got birthed when I was birthing the GFR mission was the 12 GFR commandments. And they were born from me looking back at the 20 years of coaching and mentoring six and seven figure entrepreneurs, mission based folks, right? That like where your mission is, your work is very personal. And I realized that there were 12 ways that they would 
keep getting in their way. Like 20 years, it came down to 12 things that people would do to keep themselves from getting out there. Like to, you know, I would say how they would, they would get in their own way. And so one of the core things was they would worry a lot about being normal, proper, or polite. Like, you know, and, and that worry would, would dampen their marketing. That worry would have them really not like going for the business that they really wanted to go for. Like that worry would have them hiding parts of themselves. And, and, and as a result, it would water down their marketing and then they wouldn't attract what they wanted. And so each of the commit, so that's one of the commandments. Number three, don't worry about being normal, proper or polite. And you can get those on my website that Deb gave. Um, and each commandment has a confession question. So it kind of like helps you see if that's the one, like if that's your blind spot. So this one is, um, where am I not speaking my truth? So it's just such a great question to really look at, you know, in your life, in your business, where am I not speaking my truth? Like mm -hmm. when I look at my website, like is my soapbox in there? Like is my passion coming through, you know? And, and, and that's why I say when you turn people off. What, give me an example of that because when you bring up soapbox and website, I'd love to know more specifically, what does a truth look like? Speaking a truth like on a website. Yeah. So this is a, this is a great question. This is a question that I often will ask that helps people see if this is like a thing for them. Are they like, cause they'll be like, oh, I'm not worried about being polite, you know? Um, and then I say, well, if you could say anything you want in your marketing or anything, anything you want, like being out there or speaking or, or however you put yourself out there and you, and you weren't worried about turning anyone off or getting in trouble or, or anybody like rejecting you or judging you, right? If you could say anything you want and people would just love you for it, like what would you actually say? Like what what things do you not say? Do you mumble under your breath or do you rant to your spouse that you don't say in your marketing and when you're speaking? And that's that's where I find people are hiding themselves, Deb. Hmm. What do you say that's bold on your website besides get a thing real, <laughs> which is so good. I say, I say, right. Which is pretty bold. Right. <laughs> but I say, I say that it is time now to get real about what's getting in your way. That life is short that you are mission driven and the world, the planet, the people, the organization you're supposed to help, they need you now. So mm -hmm. it's time to like put your big girl panties on and get real about what's getting in your way, get the help that you need, speak about it, you know, whatever you need to do so that you can get out there. Cause like, right, we're at the end of the 2019. Do you wanna be at the end of 2020? And again, being like, oh, I really, you know, hope that I could, you know, do this. And I went through this struggle and I really wish that I could help people in this way. It's like. I would say act like life is short, like act like you know that at any minute, right? You could be given a diagnosis or something. That That's what I would say and that's what I do say. <laughs> wow, okay, so powerful. Um, so we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna let beautiful Lisa get her camera because she's too gorgeous to not be looking at all this time. And uh, welcome to Dare to Dream. I feature successful leaders who have created major goals. And my question to you, so beautiful what Lisa just said, because she's asking like, if life was short, I do the same with dreams. Like if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? What would it take for you to feel completely bold in your life and free? And if so, what would that look like? That's what you wanna create. You can be part of the Dare to Dream podcast team. I love that you join us every week. And by the way, I do read all the messages that you send on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and Spreaker and Apple and Google Podcasts and all the other sites where you listen to the show. And even here, I'm reading your messages. So just know that if you wanna create your dream and be part of this team, you get the support of the show. I ask for your support too. So after 12 and a half years, we can sustain this at a very high level for the price of a cup of coffee or more. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream, patreon.com slash dare to dream. You can contribute and donate to the show so that this number one transformation conversation is yours every week. And I thank you for making a difference and donating to the show, patreon.com slash dare to dream, because it's about supporting you, the conversations that help you find better ways to live and create your big dreams. 
And if you are just tuning in, this is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream podcast. I'm interviewing Lisa Cherney. She is the queen of clarity and the host of Get Effing Real podcast. Her website is gfr.life. And we're going to bring Lisa back to the show. And hopefully she's she's not unhinged. So she, so she is unhinged, but it's all in the best way. And hopefully she's um she's I'm still frozen, Deb. I don't I my you're frozen really? on my computer too. So I don't know. Oh uh, well, maybe everybody's seeing everything. So and I see you guys are writing a lot, and I'm very grateful for that and your contribution. So wonderful, wonderful. Um, so we'll just keep this as is and uh I don't know. She's a gorgeous creature. Bring her back. Bring her back. Look at that great screen. Um, but I'll, I'll do this until we can bring her back, hopefully soon. And uh, Lisa, I have a great quote, which is from Oscar Wilde. Kind of cool segue. <laughs> Oscar's, Oscar Wilde, who said, quote, a visionary is one who can find his way by moonlight and see the see the dawn before the rest of the world. And it seems to me this is a lot of what you help people do and be, that um, by turning people off, you help them explode their profits. So I want to talk about that a little bit. So when we get effing real, when we um, answer the questions that you pose to us and say, okay, like, What's up in my space? Where am I not speaking the truth? What is it I need to be saying? What am I missing here? That looks like Lisa maybe is gonna come back on. This is great. So I'll just I'll just buy time. And the funny thing is that I always say is, I've been doing this 12 and a half years. If I can't run solo, yuck, 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 who can? So I do wanna tell you actually quite important is that coming up is the opening of my class, the ultimate visibility formula. This class is the diggity bomb. And the reason why it's the diggity bomb is it is the place to learn how to get booked and interviewed on radio and podcast in 60 days or less, which means that during the time you're with me live in the class, you will learn how to do just that. Go to debbid.net slash visibility, debbid.net slash visibility. The number one question that entrepreneurs ask is how can I be interviewed on radio and podcast? So I take you through the inception. First of all, learn what your message is and how to message yourself out in the world. Next, all the components you need to put together in order to be interviewed and get a hell yes from the shows you want. Where are the right shows from you? You get over 30 pages of shows and contacts from me, plus more, because I'm always updating everything that I do in that space. And to boot, you get private coaching from me during the class, how to be savvy and confident while you're being interviewed, because you want to be relaxed, right? You want to get great results. And how do you get results? We talk about that, what to do after the interview, how to show up, how to repurpose, how to create relationship with influencers. The people in my class come in, either beginners, just really wanting this, but not knowing it, or they've been out there, some of them pretty big time but they're really ready for major tweaking in their space so that they can start doing the big work out into the world. So if this feels like you know that once the spots fill up, I do close the class because we are intimate and we do build community together, right? And we work together. And one thing of import, when you go to debbid.net slash visibility, for the folks who register now, I am giving away a $500 strategy session with me about your visibility, about your exposure, about your media, and what's going on in that space. So you will get to work with me, interact, and um, it's it's pretty much debomb.com. So if that appeals to you, I'm just gonna click on messages here, and oh, so sweet, thank you for posting, because I don't have a lot of, a lot of uh, bandwidth to do that. But yes, please go ahead, <clears throat> and I see that Lisa, Lisa's back and her timing is impeccable. And thanks to everybody who's been so cool about posting and saying uh, GFR, uh, her website, GFR uh, is her website, dot life, GFR.life. And the class I'm talking about is uh, debbied.net slash visibility. And we have her gorgeousness herself here. So babe, babe Rama, I'm gonna go back to that. Sorry about awesome. that. It's perfect, <laughs> perfect. 
I'm a fluffer. Now back to I, our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> exactly. I love, hey, I love the realness of this. You know, I came from uh, being a stage actress. So for me, it's like, whatever happens, you go with it and you keep smiling as though it's part of the show, right? So <laughs> it was Oscar Wilde who said, a visionary is one who can find his way by moonlight and see the dawn before the rest of the world. And that feels very much to me like what you're saying, to be able to see things before the rest of the world gets it really is being an entrepreneur and a visionary. And with some of the tenants you're talking about with the commandments, plus, you know, really taxing people by saying, no, like what's really going on in your space? What really aren't you talking about? What really is in your heart? Like that's big. So when we, when we may turn people off, how do we actually explode our profits? Like how does that equation work? The equation is that we focus on the people we're turning on. And I mean, that gets to like a core fear that we have about wanting to be liked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been, I have been holding space for people to find the perfect words to describe what they do and attract people they want to help for 20 years. And the biggest obstacle that people encounter is their own inner resistance to saying really what they want to say and get over their fear of what people are going to think. Because when they're focused on what people are going to think, they're actually focusing on the people they don't even want. <laughs> you know, so I used to talk about ideal client a lot, you know, and I used to say, you know, you will attract your ideal clients and you will repel your non-ideal ones. And honestly, mission-driven entrepreneurs, we don't have time to be messing around with people that really actually don't want what we have. They don't value it. They don't, they're not on board, right? So it's like, you know, I used to say a cap full, a concentrated cap full of your ideal clients will give you bucket loads of money. You know, it's mm -hmm. those people that like really, like your, you know, them, your followers and people that love you, adore you, Deb, like, you know, they just, they will invest and they will show up. And so it, it that's where the, it, it seems like the most courageous act to speak our truth in our marketing, to speak our truth about, our mission, but you know, people come to me when they, for years and years, they haven't been and their business is atrophy, their passion atrophies because it's mm -hmm. not really fueled by the feedback that they want. So it's like, it's really being willing to turn people off to turn yourself on to your own business, right? You, you, I know in all the years that I've known you, followed you and there was a period of time, I'm not sure you're still doing this, where you were like, I work part time and I make quadruple the money. Is that still a fact for you? You work less and are making more? Yeah, well, so yeah, I used to have a brand called Full Time Prosperity Part Time Hours, right? And mm -hmm. and and the, the, the real big promise was six I figures hope, on your I terms. Say, I hope people can hear because I teach messaging too. Like that was so brilliant. You're not it was being pretty brilliant. brilliant. You're not saying joy, happy, bliss, all these words people try to use that means nothing. It doesn't land. You literally said exactly the solution. I get this much work, that much pay, and that's what I'm putting out, baby. Yes. It's like, mic yes. drop. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. I still am a huge advocate for people creating a business on their terms. But in order to do that, you need to get effing real about what you want and what's not working, right? That's another one of our commandments. Let go of what doesn't feel good. That's number two. And the confession question is what doesn't feel good? It seems so simple, but if you really sit with it and you really give yourself a chance to answer the question, what does people are afraid? Because they just feel like, well, I can't do anything about it anyway. Or it's not like I'm going to stop doing that. Or I can't stop being a mom. Or I can't, you know, stop caring for, for my mom. Or, you know, there's these big things that people, you know, like put in that bucket. But what about all the little, let's tackle the little things first. Like, what can you stop doing that doesn't feel good, right? Like that, that to me, right? So, so, so how do you create a business that you love is like, you have to be, you have to decide, like, I'm going to, I really want this to feel good. So I, even though this mentor that I paid a lot of money told me that I need to do X, Y, Z, that's not feeling good. So I need to find, like, I need to take what I like and leave the rest. And I've even started talking, Deb, about unmentoring. If you want to work with me, 
We're going to be unmentoring because you know what? You have learned all the things. You have made all the investments. You're still not where you want to be. You're still not happy. So what do we need to let go of? What do we need to create in a way that feels good to you? You know, like what do we need to get up and real about? So, I mean, I can go on and on about, about how important it is to, to do what feels good because our, our inner fuel as a somebody who has a mission and you know or you went through something and you want to help people because of what you went through that inner fuel needs to be stoked all the time and the more that you do stuff that doesn't feel good the more it gets dampened and then how and then who, who how do we get motivated to like keep going when we get knocked down we need that fire we need to stoke that fire and that fire is stoked by being real i want you to give us some pr principles that we don't know about that creates success. So pull back the curtain. Success principles nobody else is telling us about, but you know, God damn it, they work. Okay, uh, now that I'm on camera, I am holding up my 12 GFR commandments, y'all. You're gonna go to my website, gfr.life, gfr.life forward slash 12 C, and you're gonna get them. Cause this is, this is, I have distilled it from 20 years of working with entrepreneurs, I've distilled it to 12 things. So I already gave you, let's just review. I already mm -hmm. gave you, these are success principles. Let go of what doesn't feel good. Success principle, that's GFR commandment number two. The other one that Deborah likes is don't worry about being normal, proper, or polite. That's success principle number two. That happens to be GFR commandment number three. <laughs> so let's start with those. Principle number two, just so you know, I was born under the star of success principle number two, that's for sure. Normal, forget it. Polite, I mean, yeah, not even. No, I know. And it's, and people, well, I can't be rude. I'm not talking about being rude. I'm just like, okay, here's an example. So, okay, uh, let me give you an example of don't worry about being normal, proper, polite. That was a huge risk for me. My mm -hmm. mother in law, her best friend that she grew up with from like high school, got me a speaking gig. This is like 10 years ago, got me a speaking gig at, um, at a conference for DJs, disc jock in the music industry. I was so excited. I had just started out. I didn't really have like connections. And, you know, I was talking about marketing and I, you know, I was pretty much talking to anybody who listened about marketing. And so it was like a year in advance as it got closer and closer and closer. I, I and I had some experience now working with some DJs. I realized Deb, that they weren't really my ideal clients. It really, really like it wasn't really want, where I wanted to play. I was playing more with like coaches and you know, teachers and, you know, healers and like people that were like more service based. And, and, um, it was in Las Vegas and I had to be away from my, like then like four year old. And I was like, I, you know, I just felt this heaviness about it when I looked at my calendar and I just, I just couldn't ignore those feelings until finally, like a month before, a month before, this is my mother-in-law's best friend that she grew up with. I told her I didn't want to do the gig. I said, I just, it's not resonating with me anymore. Like, I just don't feel like I'm the best one to talk about marketing to your audience. Of course, she didn't take it like, oh, great. You know, she, 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 you know, she, it was like, you're, you're kind of leaving me here. And I said, I just know you're going to find the perfect person. I just know it. And literally within like 24 hours, she got somebody else. And this person was so excited for the opportunity. And, uh, which reminds me of a quote from one of my mentors, Alan Cohen. He says, your no is somebody else's yes. Your no is somebody else's yes. And I just like, there was so, I mean, I'd still tell that story because it was, it was like rearranged my DNA. It was so profound an experience because I had so much terror and fear about canceling this. Because most people just think, you no, you just, no, not an option. Ah, do it, suck it up, you know, just do it. And I just don't suck it up. I just... I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> I don't. I. I don't know how to do that anymore at all. And uh, and so and then I saw that when I let that speaking gig go, I think I got two others that were within, within six weeks of that that were like at these awesome conferences with like heart based you know business owners and like I noticed too that the universe kind of can't bring mm -hmm. you what you want if it's if you're like filled up with stuff that you don't want. So uh, the don't worry about being normal, proper, and polite has so many applications, not just in your marketing, but just like how you run your business, the decisions you make. You know, um, one of my guests, um, you know, uh, on my show talked about, you know, she needed to fire people quicker because she was tolerating like these employees that were like sucking the life out of her business. You know, it's like there's so many ways that we hold back worrying about what other people will think. 
Um, and then we're the ones really in the one, we're the ones that get the raw end of the deal. And it's just, you know, if you're going to be a mission based business owner, you got to put your mission first. Mm -hmm. Powerful stuff. My God. You I want hear more, you, you want more success principles. <laughs> I, um, I do, but it may have to be episode two because I know we have a finite amount of time here. We have about six more minutes and I, I may want to get a little more brilliance in, but I like the fact that we're going to tease people and force them to go to your site to get the rest. You know, there, and there's so much I can say about that. Like the time um, I was in my twenties and I was friends with a gal. I remember she's super beautiful and connected and she had money and I just couldn't stand her. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she so wanted to be my friend, but I found her so like grating and annoying. And I was friends. I tolerated it for as long as I could and then I had a had these beautiful mentors back then. My God, talk about they were really effing real all the time. And they mentored me and said, you know, telling someone the truth is the greatest gift. And man, was that scary. So she called me and said, I, I'm understanding you're saying you'd prefer to part ways and, you know, peacefully. And can I ask why? And I said, because kindness, man, I'll always lead with kindness. I wouldn't want to crush someone because I wouldn't want to be crushed. But I told her all the things I thought were amazing, truthfully about her. And I also said, and these are the things that are not permitting me to go forward. And when we we're done, you know, whew, what a relief. And at the same time, didn't know in the silence what would ensue. And she said, thank you, because over the years, Time and time again, people have stopped being friends with me and no one has ever stopped long enough to tell me why. Wow. Now I can address this. And it was like, oh my word, what a gift that was both ways. And I've always remembered that if you'll stay in the truth with kindness and stay long enough, you know, it's always a gift whether someone takes it or not, but it is a gift. They're inherent for both of us. So, so much can be done when we align ourselves with truth at that level. I, what I really hear you saying for people who utilize some of what you're talking about, and then there's 12, and I think you've only done three, so this is powerful stuff, that if we wanna be a star in our business, we, we have to shine our own light. We have to follow our path. We can't worry about the darkness or what other people think or feel or what we even imagine they will, and that's when our star shines the brightest. Absolutely. Being unapologetically you. It's a roadmap for getting real and a goal for a business and a life that we can live without regrets. Are there, is there a tough question? Um, I know you shared one about the website. Is there any other tough question you might share with us that we can ponder? Yeah, I think, um, one of the questions that I love people to ponder is, what would you do if you had faith in yourself and in your mission? And what would you do differently if you had faith in yourself and in your mission? And of course, it's this confession question for commandment number six, which is have faith in yourself and in your mission. But I love this question, like, what would I do differently if I had faith? Because it really shows you, it kind of illuminates, like, where am I holding back or where am I scared or where am I fearful? Um, and uh, and, and sometimes we feel like we're confused, you know, mm. and I'm the queen of clarity. People come to me, it's like, I need clarity. I'm confused. Um, I can't pick one thing. Um, I don't know, you know, there's too much to do. I don't know what to do. And I push back on people like, you know, you, you can pick. It's just like, you're just not, you're not being real. You're not admitting to yourself actually what you really want to do, what you really want to pick. You're so clouded with what you think you should do, what others think you, you know, should do, what you've done in the past. Right. But if you just really say, what would I do differently if I had faith, if I had faith in myself and my mission, what would I do differently? It's so illuminating to really be in deep inquiry with a question like that. Wow. That's super great, even for me to hear right now. So I've had new pieces mm -hmm. of my business really unexpected be presented to me and and they're very exciting. And you're right. As I'm listening to you, I could feel that space of choice. Good question, tough question, but good because be on the path, people, right? That's why we're here. Yeah, That's why yeah. stuff comes to us. So again, Lisa Cherney, GFR.life, and the 12 commandments are where? Just forward slash slash 
12C, gfr.life forward slash 12C as in commandments. Easy. So I asked you this 11 years ago. I get to ask you this again because my God, right? How much we change. This is some it. things none, that don't change. <laughs> <laughs> what a dream. What are you next dare to dream, Lisa? What are your future dreams and goals? My dare to dream is to have everybody on the planet embracing their unique expression. Just loving and appreciating our differences, celebrating our differences, feeling free to be ourselves and serve mm -hmm. in the way that we want and show up for people that we want, embracing their unique expression. That is my ultimate vision. And what do you do every day that keeps you effing real? What is the ritual you do every day or what is your practice? Well, I'm a big meditator. And in the year that my business uh, grows seven figures was the year that I learned to meditate. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I wanted a vac I felt like I wanted a vacation every freaking day. And I realized mm -hmm. that even if I went on vacation, I wasn't going to get the feeling that I, that, that I was longing for. So I do mm -hmm. transcendental meditation two to three times a day. I also love doing guided imagery meditation, like pick an app, you know, there's awesome apps and there's, there is actually nothing more potent than shutting off our brains, slowing down our brains, like dropping into what's real, being able to hear our inner voice, quiet things down, see. And then when we do, we could see more clearly what's holding us back, like addictions or, you know, ways we're distracting ourselves or fears that are coming up. And it's just it's so illuminating. Um, so that that's being quiet, whatever that looks like for you, y'all, you know, like you could go for a walk, you can listen to music, you could dance, you could pet your dog, you could cuddle your kid, like, but to actually be aware, like, okay, I am being present, I am slowing down, this is part of my meditation, this is, this is me getting in touch with me, this is me hearing my own inner voice, nothing, nothing more valuable than that. I would love to know, I feel like every year, Lisa has a theme for each person indigenously. What has your theme been this year? What are you learning the most about, stepping the most into, curious the most about? This may sound uh, uh, like planned or, or uh, canned, but get effing real. Like I, I believe that mission-driven entrepreneurs, we need to walk our talk. We need to do our own work. In fact, when I'm mentoring people, like one of the things that themes that come up constantly is like, how is that challenge? How do you need to do your own work to get through that challenge? And then how is that going to be part of your work? Like it's so mm -hmm. holographic and such an upward smile spiral of us as mission driven entrepreneurs needing to do our own freaking work. So like getting real, like is my theme. Like where else can I get real? How much more real could I be? Like I did, I'm recovering from surgery, foot surgery, and I, it is taking me out. And I've had, I had to cancel my interview with you and reschedule. And that was freaking hard. Talk about inner game. I was like, oh my God, it's Debbie Dodger. I can't, you know, and it wasn't even, I have to cancel. I chose, I just chose. It didn't feel good. It wasn't aligned. I didn't want to be on camera. I didn't want to be on. I didn't have it in me. Like, mm -hmm. and that, was such a profound like self care thing. And then I just like watching things unfold that day and what was really meant to be. And I know you had your like, that was a gift of time for you. And so it's just, um, you know, getting real and being real and and being a model, showing people what that looks like. You know, that is my theme for this year and into next year, just stepping it up on the get real game. <laughs> and so you've got your podcast. And what I, I know that people who are in your group can join after the podcast to get intimate with the guest. So what talk about what are the ways people can work with you if they want to get effing real? I yeah, like thank you. Yeah, I know. I saw so funny. You're not the only one. <laughs> The first thing I do is give permission, people permission to say the F word. It's quite freeing. <laughs> so when I, I know it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Um, the first, the first, the first thing to do is to get, go to the podcast and you will be inspired by the stories The I call them wormhole. It's the GFR wormhole, like the struggle that serves a purpose and you will hear, you will hear it all and it will make you feel normal and and give you fuel. So check out the podcast that, you know, get fucking real and 
Then um, we have a community, the GFR Squad, which is, oh my God, it's amazing. It's 20 bucks a month right now, Deb, or 200 for the year. And people get all of the after the show um, special content. We do a call with me on Zoom once a month called the Confession Call. And we use one of the commandments each month as a theme, which is um, super fun. And people, people just find like there's no other place for them to let their hair down and be real. Like you don't have to show up being all perfect. And people... <laughs> Right. It's, it's really, it's so, it's, it's, it's really a comfy, wonderful, awesome place. Um, and then we have um, a Facebook group. It's a private Facebook group only for paid members. And uh, so you can go to the GFR.life forward slash squad and check that out. And we still have our founder special going on now because, uh, yeah, that's we're only, you know, like four or five months into it. So we're still looking for founding members. It's a, a really a phenomenal place to be um, like no other online. Um, and then if you really want to, you know, just really um, put your feet to the fire and get real and open up to what's possible in your business, of course, there's ways to work with you more closely. And there's also information about that on GFR.life. That's gorgeous. Oh my God, woman. Lisa, do not wait 11 years. We have to do this way sooner. Very refreshing. Okay. Thank you. I think it should be at least here. annual. <laughs> okay. Let's pound it out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing your brilliance today on Dare to Dream. This has been truly, uli amazing. I feel super blessed and you can see why. It is so phenomenal for me to be part of this show and who I get to source and share with you. Um, and Lisa is just an, um, a major fine example of that. I'm gonna end today's show with this quote from Mary Oliver, which is, someone I loved once gave me a box full of darkness. It took me years to understand that this too was a gift. I am next interviewing on Dare to Dream, my guest, Cynthia Clark. This woman is amazing. I mean, she is, she is more certified in some of the most amazing modalities. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about this, people, palm reading. She is a consultant. She's a compatibility expert. She's the author of Stories in Your Hand. She's worked with over 7,000 people to unlock the truth of their highest potential and joy. She's gonna be doing a live reading on my hands and even more, because she's also got dating apps now for people. I think that is so smart. Like you can look at somebody's hand on her app and get a lot of information, it's so beautiful. Subscribe to Dare to Dream podcast. It's your number one transformation conversation. Subscribe also to the inspirational YouTube so you can see me and my guests. You don't have to just listen. Go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Thank you for joining me today on Dare to Dream. If you're ready for the ultimate visibility formula, if you wanna get booked on radio and podcast in 60 days or less to get interviewed and get really great results, go to Debbie d.net slash visibility. Remember, it's with an I, D-E-B-B-I, d.net slash visibility. Remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thanks for joining us.